For your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny, Martin. Philip Martin, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Martin. Got a job for you. Oh, fine. The William Shaw of Mr. Alfred Chambers of Pittsburgh. He was shot to death yesterday. Murder? That's the way it looks. He'd rented a cabin in Michigan, Lake No Island. Where's that? Oh, about 30 miles from Sioux, St. Marie. Right up near Canada. Yeah, that's right. His wife found him lying in the front room of the cabin, shot through the chest. The officer handling the case is Captain George Lane, Sioux, St. Marie Police. He'll be expecting you. I'll leave in the morning. John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Here's truly Johnny Dollar. Submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alfred Chambers matter. Expense account item one, forty-five dollars and ninety-five cents, train fare and incidentals between Hartford, Connecticut, and Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Expense account item two, seventy-five cents, cab fare to the local police station. Well, I introduced myself to Captain George Lane. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Mr. Martin from your company called, told me to expect you. How can I help? Well, to begin with, you can fill me in on the details. And sure. You ever been to the snow? The snow? Lake Chino Island. Oh, no, no. Well, there are a whole group of islands on the fringe of Lake Huron. Lake Chino means the channel. It's somewhat of a resort now, but very exclusive. People who go to the snows have been coming up for years. They own homes on various islands, and we're all together a very respectable community. Alfred Chambers rented the Forester Cabin. It's one of the islands furthermost from the mainland, about uh, two miles, I'd say. He spent three days in the snows, and then his wife arrived from Pittsburgh. Mr. Schoenberg fellow had a boat rental service, took her out to the island, and she found her husband in the living room, dead, shot through the chest. Any suspects? Not a one. Mrs. Chambers told me she'd separated from her husband about a week before he'd come to the snows, but she couldn't have killed him. Schoenberg was with her all the time. And according to the coroner, Chambers had been dead for about 14 hours. Until the investigation cleared up, I've been making my headquarters at the hotel at the snows. I just came in to get the coroner's report. I was going back this afternoon if you'd care some in. Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> Any other homes on the island? Yes, yeah, several. One about a half mile south, one on the other side of the island. This is where Mrs. Chambers found her husband. Mm -hmm. Lying on his face. The front door was open. He wasn't shot inside the cabin. He wasn't? Well, she didn't notice when he came in, there was some blood leading up the front steps. See? You can see the clothes in here. Check it in from outside. Yeah. Huh? No electricity in the house. No, Coleman Lamps. The other two homes on the island have electricity and so on. But this place is nearly 60 years old. The owners never bothered to equip it with any modern conveniences. How did Chambers get to and from the mainland? Boat. They had the boat from Schoenberg. When the coroner examined him, he noticed that his shoes were still damp. Later examination showed he'd been in the water fully cold. That's funny. I think he was shot probably while he was on in the back. Fell in the water and waited to show it. He said he'd been dead about 14 hours, right? Huh? Uh, maybe about five in the evening when he was shot. Hmm. What time does it get dark? Oh, up here this time of year, it doesn't get dark till about nine o'clock. Twilight. Shot hmm. in the chest. Mm hmm. You recovered a slug? Yeah, 22, long rifle. Well, he was shot when it was light, and you think he was out there in the dark. So he's sure he's out there. There was a thick mud on his shoes and on the pants. Now, that mud is on the bottom out there by the dock. In close here, it's more sand. And then they'll get completely wet like that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem likely that anyone could have shot him from the lake. No, they'd have to be out in the boat. That'd be taking a pretty big chance. And somebody on the island. Somewhere in the woods up there, huh? Probably. Someone could have landed on the island any place and walked here. Anyone hear a shot? Yeah, I talked with a lot of people. Some of them remember hearing a shot at that time. There's no telling where it came from. Shot on this lake, you can hear from miles. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to have a talk with Mrs. Chambers. Sure. 
Schoenberg can take us back to the mainland. Move back my car over to the hotel. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Mr. Oh, Davis. Not at all. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. Oh, it's a beautiful view. Yes, isn't it? Is this your first time out here? Yes, it is. Mine, too. And you're in my charge, investigator. Yes. My company covers both you and your husband. Well, Mr. Donald, just how can I help you? Answer some questions. I know it's tough at this time. Well, I'd be glad to tell you anything I can. Captain Lane said that you and Mr. Chambers had separated. That's correct. May I ask why? Isn't it absolutely necessary? Your husband's been killed, Mrs. Chambers. Your separation might mean nothing, and then again... Yes, it was all the way. Do you mind telling me about it? This is the most pleasant subject that I suppose you have to know. About a month ago, Alan and I had been seeing this woman, but it was serious. We argued... A very nasty argument. It did it separate me now, but because of the publicity, we held off. Your husband was in the steel business, wasn't he? Yes. And we had two children. Things like this happen all the time, I guess. I got out of town. I saw the girl one well, night. Very attractive. Quite nice. I think I told her she was in a nursery in college. What's her name? Oh, I don't think it's a true fault. Oh, yeah, and my husband was certainly a very attractive man. I don't think it was either of their faults, really. It seemed like that happened. It would be a shame to involve her now. She's already involved. It looks like murder. Anyone connected with your husband is involved. What's her name? Yeah, I'm not okay. I never met her, but my husband told me I really met the girl. And a fine family. I think the guy wouldn't have cared whether or not she was involved in the scandal, but... Now, oh, certainly I'm just not good enough, and it would be terrible to have my children. I thought a lot about the girl after I found out. I hope that perhaps she won't be spared. She lives in Pittsburgh? Yes. Your husband left Pittsburgh when? Oh, yes, he did today. He decided to take his vacation away. So I found it over. Why did you come up here? I thought things over to Mr. Dollar. I decided to be Alice Creighton. I talked with our lawyer, and he suggested I have one hour talk with Al. I left my family. Did you tell your husband you were coming up? No. He was in there with me. There's no phone on the island. The letter would have gotten here after I did it. So you just packed and came up and... Yes. I only packed one day, but I wasn't planning on staying. When did you leave this thing? The morning... Oh, you arrived the next morning? Oh, I arrived to the sea that night. I came to the sea the next morning. You've never been here before? No. How did you know how to find the cabin where your husband was staying? Well, I simply asked him where he went to be. I asked him to take him to the sea after his cabin. Let's see. Can you think of anyone who might want to kill your husband? A week ago, I thought about it. Anyone else? No. My husband is still alive, Mr. Donner. He was a very respected man. No business troubles? Oh, no. How long has it been since your husband was up here? Oh, we're not sure. He only has to talk about it. He has to tell his children and children to just... Oh, I guess it's about ten years ago. Yes, I think it was about that long before we married. Well, Mrs. Chambers? Oh, Mr. Gordon? I'll have to get back to Captain Lane. I've got his car. Captain, I was going to stay until we finish the investigation. Yes, sir. I don't know what anyone here has. I was hoping I might have done it. It's a very good friend. Uh, Pleasant done it. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Chambers, but I... Excuse me. Yes? Yes. By all means, come right up. Well, I'll be going, Mrs. Chambers. I think you should stay up to Dallas. Hmm? That phone call is going to be over. It's a lot of background. And now, with our star, 
star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Jane Elkins, the woman who had caused the separation between Mrs. Chambers and her husband, had called from the hotel lobby. Jane Elkins, the Pittsburgh college student, had suddenly turned up at Lake Chenot's. Yards below a huge Georgian house. 
No one asked to see my invitation, so I grabbed a drink from the passing tray and looked around for Jane Elkin. I spotted her a few yards away, talking to a stout mustache party with a rich bourbon complexion. I stepped briskly up to her side. Uh, Jane Elkin, I presume? Oh. Uh, Jane, I wonder if I can have a word with you. Oh, old man, you won't mind if I steal the guest of honor from you, will you? Mind? I certainly do mind. I wouldn't think it. Say, don't I know you? Aren't you Robinson from East Supply? Uh, no, I'm Dollar. Insurance. I'm insurance. Oh, well, uh, excuse me. I'll see you later, Jane. That always empties the hall in a hurry. What are you doing here? I've got a lot of questions that need answers. I don't want to make a scene, but if you don't leave the thing, I'll have a show now. You might as well talk to me and to the police. I'm a lot more sympathetic. The police? Yeah, the police. Now just give me some answers and I'll be on my way. What, what do you want to know? Well, let's cut it. What time did your fiancé come back here yesterday? I'm not sure. I think it was around 6 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, could you point him out to me? He's standing over there by the bar. Uh, the man in the green Wow, he's a big one, isn't he? Now, Miss Elkins, what time did you return here yesterday? About four o'clock. Four o'clock. You stayed here the rest of the afternoon? Yes. Where were you? Hmm? Were you in the house? I see, you can't take it. Take it easy. Charles is heading this way. Please, please go. Oh, not yet. Charles is the man I'd like most to meet. You two seem to be having a fascinating conversation. Mind if I butt in? Oh, butt away, Mr. Weatherwax. Uh, my name is Dollar. How do you do, Mr. Dollar? Fine, thank you. Uh, if you're through with my hand now, I'd like it back. How's that, Mr. Dunn? I might want to use it again sometime. Oh, sorry. Here, you can have it back. Thanks. I want to give you a tip. Next time you try that bone-crushing bit, watch out for that hook. <laughs> yeah, just who is this little friend of yours? He's not a friend. Oh, no, not a friend. Something much more than that. Much closer. Much warmer. Get out of here, Dollar. I'm so happy I'll break you in two. I'll scatter you all over the place. All right, all right, Mr. Weatherwax. I'll go. You told me what I wanted to know. You're a jealous man and a violent man. The perfect type. What are you talking about? Charles, he's a detective. He's investigating Alfred's death. Oh, why don't you say so, darling? I'm not answering today. I'm asking. For instance, where were you yesterday afternoon? And do you own a 22 rifle? Chambers was killed with a 22. The slug can be traced to the rifle it was fired from. They call it ballistics. Isn't the science wonderful? Goodbye, Charles. Greenberg and I took off from the Sal Island, but instead of heading to the center field, we turned into that about a half mile down the lake where we could still see the weather wax dot. We waited there for ten minutes. Then Charles weather wax appeared on the landing. He climbed into a small cruiser and headed south. He chased to a spot about 300 yards off the shore of Baxter's Island, hove to, stuck down a bathing trunk, put on a pair of underwater goggles, and dived in. He came up seconds later and then submerged once more. I told Schoenberg to pull up to him at top speed. When Charles surfaced again, he saw us bearing down on him and climbed hastily back into the boat. But before he could lay anchor, we were alongside. Don't leave this yet, Charles. This is a gun in my hand. Yeah, I see it. You're fishing without a spear, huh? What kind of fish are you after, Charles? All right. Start it up and head to the landing. And don't get reckless, Charles. I'm a fair shot. Charles, all the show is going ashore. Oh, we've got this, Charles. All right. Let's go toward the house. We can talk better there. Come on, move, Charles. Move. This is far enough. All right, talk, Charles. What were you looking for out there in the sky blue water? I don't have to tell you anything. You'd rather talk to Captain Lane. It's all right with me. But why not tell me? It'll look a little better on the record. I didn't kill Chambers, but I was with him when he was killed. Go on. I came over to tell him to stay away from Jane. But Jane said that she'd broken with him that same afternoon. No, I didn't know that then. We were standing out on the dock, he and I were talking. There was a shot, and he fell in the water. And you just left him there? But he was dead. 
Oh, I'm afraid not. He made it to the cabin. Oh, I thought he was dead. I got panicky. I realized how bad it looked. Ran to my boat and took off. Then I remembered I had a 22 rifle in the cabin. I threw it overboard. Then today you made a crack about ballistics. It came to me what I'd done. I'd thrown away the one piece of evidence that would clear me. So I came back to find it. Well, it's a good story. But I don't buy it. I think you're... <laughs> man was very sad. He died with him suddenly in a flying attack, and I went over backwards. I managed to kick loose from his grip with the gun and he held it out of my hand. He flipped it up and pointed it at my head. I jumped at him. He went over backwards. I went over with him. Grabbed the gun from his hand and then stood up. Much the worse for wear. You're pretty fast, Dollar. Tell me something. Why didn't you fire? You had plenty of time. Why not? Maybe they're just not the shooting type. Maybe that tall story you told is true. It is true. Well, maybe I believe you. The only trouble is, if you didn't kill him, there's a good chance that Jane did. Are you crazy? Oh, I don't think so. Besides you, she's the only person I know of who had both motive and opportunity and no alibi. Oh, you're raving mad. What motive would she have to kill him? She says she told Chambers Tuesday that it was all over between them. She did. She says she did. But suppose it was the other way around. Suppose he guilted her. <laughs> Ever hear the line about a woman scorned? All right. All right, I killed him. I didn't know that Jane had broken up with him. He got nasty and I shot him. I see. Where were you when you shot him? I was... Well, what difference does that make? I tell you, I killed him. Take me into the mainland, I'll make a full confession. Okay. If you say so. I do. Hey. That was a rifle shot. Came from over there beyond those trees. Yeah. Come on, let's go, halfback. You first. <laughs> we ran to the grove of first trees and things were a little cold, not more than 200 yards off. A rowboat was pulled up on the beach, and beside it was a small boy with a 22 rifle. Oh! Hi. What's your name? Jimmy Bishop. What's yours? You live over in Fire Island, don't you? Yeah. What were you shooting at just now? Oh, I'll be all right, you see. My father says they're trapped. You come here often, you see? Once in a while. Were you here Tuesday afternoon around 5 o'clock? Yeah, sure. I got two spears. I'm afraid that wasn't all you got for me. blooded murder on your hands, and it turns out to be a young kid who shouldn't have been given a gun on his birthday. The 22 was checked by the ballistics department and proved to be the one that had fired the fatal shot. At the inquest, the jury returned a verdict of accidental manslaughter. However, it's doubtful if young Jimmy Bishop will ever want another gun as long as he lives. <laughs> Expense account item four, twenty-two dollars for hotel bill and transportation back to the city airport. Expense account item five, forty-three dollars and eighty-five cents, plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, one hundred and fourteen dollars and five cents. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley can help make your holiday easier with cash for clothes. Sell us your gently used trendy styles to earn cash on the spot. We need your denim, dressy clothes, sweaters, boots, and more. Plato's Closet buys and sells sustainable styles. Earn cash to make holiday spending less stressful. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle this year. Simply get cash for your cool clothes at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Every day my employees get scam emails. I wanted to protect my business and clients, so I checked out CISA's Secure Our World. They've got four simple ways we can protect our businesses from online threats. Learn more at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world.